Come on now, people. I've been telling you for almost two years now, you need to have a GNR TV. And now, sports are back. Football is back. Now is the perfect time for you to get this if you don't have it already. And if you look on over here, as I've been telling you before, you get all these amazing channels, every single one of them, for $20 a month for two devices. And if you look on up over here, it's written. It's written everything you get with GNR TV. If you want four devices, $40. And there's some cool extras right here. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, get it. What more can I say? What more can I say? It's time to cut the damn cord, stop being ripped off by the dish and cable, and get this lovely thing we call GNR TV. Streaming done right. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this Jason's mask. How's it going, everybody? Another episode of Horror Research 30. And yes, again, as you guys can see, the Z, the Z network. I was not making this up. It's a network, a creator's network that I created with some friends. And it's a dope network. Bunch of creators, bunch of different creators. It's not just horror creators. And I actually started another show called um, Popcorn and Pints, which is going to be regular movie reviews. No horror at all. Regular movie reviews, regular TV show reviews, and interviews of people who are in TV shows or movies. And today I have my guest... Kelvin of Pop Horror again. He's back. Kelvin, man, what's up? How you doing? Yo, what's up, Baron? It's good to be back for the first time in almost a year. Last time we did the podcast, well, my first podcast was with you in January, so it's been it's been quite a while, but um, it feels good to be back on the podcast with you. I'm glad you're back, man. And yeah, it, it feels like longer than a year. I was asking you a few minutes ago, like, what's the last time we recorded together? Because 2020 has been so fucking crazy. 2020 feels like almost like a decade. I swear. So much crazy shit's been going on. And I feel like every month is something new. And I'm just like, can we just like, you know, in 2021 comments, can we just like wipe this year off? Just erase this year and kind of forget about it to an extent of just, you know, we won't discuss this year too much. We won't discuss it too, too much. Yeah. It's, um, it's been wild. It's, it's, you know, it's, it was just a, a thing that nobody, was expecting to be at this type of scale. And it, it's really crazy when you think about it, because back in 2019, there was a lot of, even 2018, 2018, 2019, a lot of films, you know, people were excited to see that would come out in 2020. And then all you hear is delay, 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 delay. Like if, if there's one, one of very few words that has become synonymous with 2020 has been delay. Delay or canceled. Mm-hmm. So the point where, you know, like all the dude, like literally all these movies, I remember at my last job, this had to be like maybe say March. The first two bad news I got was when fast nine. Yeah. It was when fast nine got delayed. And I believe when black, well, yeah, it was, I think, I believe it was fast nine and black widow getting delayed. So I'm like, damn. So in me, I'm predicting, you know what? Maybe, maybe, hopefully, th- hopefully things cool down because I'm not trying to see Halloween Kills get delayed. The trailer to that came around. Everybody knows the rest. <laughs> it's uh, it's no, it's an unfortunate thing. It, it's just, it's, it's one of those. Uh, it's just a gut punch. We really have to, we have to take. Um, hopefully next year things bounce back to normal because you know. Like my Regal Theater is uh, Regal, my 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 local my local theater is Regal. So just recently hearing the news now that they're closing off theaters, it's like just we thought like shit, shit just gets from goes from bad to worse to just like you know what the f- you know <laughs> it's it's gotten bad, man. Oh man, that's I I did see that either today or yesterday. I seen that news. I'm just like holy shit, like this is. 
that's a, that's a lot of theaters. That's a lot of movies not coming out. That's a lot of jobs, and it's it, it sucks. It really does suck. And then I I know one movie I was really looking forward to coming out was Candyman, and yeah, that yeah, so many times. Now it's pushed back to twenty twenty one, I believe. What else? Halloween Kills, like you said, that's pushed back to twenty twenty one, and just basically all the big horror movies that were supposed to come out this year are pushed to 2021 and it's just like wow man like there was so much shit coming out the conjuring 3 i believe was supposed to be coming out this year i was really looking forward to that and yeah, i think so uh, same thing same thing one of the another horror film i believe that was scheduled um for the show i forgot the freaking name i believe it was scheduled oh uh i mean i don't know if it's, it, it got released in some theaters not all because out here in new york it's um closed uh antebellum into Bellum, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it got released out there. It's like did some theaters, but like not really a like a, a worldwide theater release. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Or like I, you know, what I mean, like you know, in every theater. I'm not sure where that got dropped at. I know quite a few people seen it though. I just don't know where it got dropped at. I don't know if it's on streaming services now or what. But I want to see that. And I mean, I guess if you want to look at the positives of 2020, um, like when the whole COVID shit started. They sent us home, what was it, February? No, March, March 17th, I remember that date. So from March 17th, and I was still getting paid, but from March 17th all the way to, uh, what was it? Shit. Like July 20th, 27th, I was out of work. Like, I was just home, literally just home, not working or nothing. Right. And I was getting paid to stay home. So I recorded so many freaking episodes, yo. That's all I was doing. Damn near, was, maybe not every single day, but I did probably about 40 episodes that I still have to release the majority of them. Like I've been doing it here and there. And I'm, I wish if I can go back to that, I wish like, as I recorded, I was like, you know, what, let me just edit and drop it, edit and drop it, edit and drop it. But I didn't do it like that. I was just like stockpiling so much. And now I'm recording, now I'm recording not at the same pace, of course, but I'm still recording a good amount to where, like, people are like, hey, when's this? I'm like, trust me, I swear to you, I'll let you know when it comes out. I'm not sure yet because I got so much stuff to drop, which is a good problem to have in, in the podcasting world. It's just that it sucks sometimes because it's like, I wish I, could, I wish I can get it out as fast as I can record it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But it, it's still fun, though. I mean, I do love it. I it's, it's 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 more pain it's more painful that Halloween Kills is supposed to drop this month a couple of weeks away. Yeah. <laughs> Do what I'm telling you. When I saw the trailer, when they dropped the teaser, I'm like, oh yo, it's, they dropped the teaser, and they did it. So, me personally, I wish what they did with Halloween Kills did the same thing with Halloween 2018 because I feel like they showed a little, a little too much, like just for the first trailer. Well, Halloween Kills, it was like a while, like a 30, like almost like about a 30 second teaser. Dude, and it was like, granted, they didn't show a lot, but it was just enough to get you the excitement. So then I see all oh, great Halloween Kills. And then when you saw that one at the end of 2021, it's like, shit. But it's, you know what? You can't blame them because from their point, they want everybody to enjoy the movie. They don't want to release this to a limited capacity where it's like, you have you you know group A is able to watch it, but then group B has to wait so they can watch. You know they they want everybody to enjoy it. It's, it is the case with every movie that got delayed, so it is understandable. But you know it's and you know what? it just makes it more exciting because you know the longer the wait, the better For, to me at least. That's how I'm looking at it. That's a great way to look at it. <laughs> no, yeah, no, dude, it, it is. I mean. People, you know, there's a lot of movies that people waited a long time to see. So, you know, yeah, it does suck. We have to wait longer, but the hype and the wait, it's going to pay off in the long run. I hope so, man. Like, I I don't necessarily have high hopes for Halloween. And I don't mean that in like a way that I think the movie's going to suck. I just, I'm expecting it to be good, at least as good as 2018. I have high hopes for Candyman, though. And I hate having high hopes for movies because it's like you have these high, high, high expectations for these movies, for these horror films. And when they might be awesome movies, too. And but if they don't meet your high expectations in your mind, you're going to say that movie wasn't as 
Yeah, was all right, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, I will say though, because uh, I enjoyed Halloween 2018. As I watched it like a while back ago again, because I have it on Blu-ray, I still enjoy it, but it does have its issues. It's not the perfect sequel, but you look at the previous films, to me, it was the best since the first two. I got to me, at least. And this is why people, which we're going to be doing this starting actually Monday, but, um, well, this won't be out that Monday, but so I guess that doesn't matter to them. But anyway, this is why I want to go through the films of the Halloween franchise, because I, I do know the films to an extent, but I don't know them as well as I know, like a Friday the 13th. That's my favorite slasher franchise. So of course, I'm going to know that one the most. And, but I want to go through it and kind of see which ones I which one I like the best because right now I don't remember two very very well. I'm sure once I watch it, I'm just like, okay, I got it. But as of right now, in my in my mind, my favorite is part one, and my second favorite is from 2018. But again, I have to like go through and watch them all again. I'm sure it'll I'm sure it'll probably go one as far as my favorites. Not not no particular order, but it'll probably be one, two, and 2018. However, those are you know flip flopped around. Because those three, I know, kind of follow the same story, so to speak, minus minus the, you know, them not being related. Yeah, that's like the only thing. But, you know, similar story. And I know I know with um, one and two, if I'm not mistaken, you can correct me if I'm wrong, because you probably know it better than I do. Because you're a bigger, you know, you're a bigger fan of Michael. Part two kind of follows part one, right? Kind of picks up where part one ends. Literally picks up like on the same night. Boom. See that? That I like when movies do that. I love when movies do that. And I know 2018 is 40 years later, but I kind of wish they included. I think they should have included one and two, and then after everything, just ignored the rest. Yeah, but you see the, the issue with that. I agree with you, but the big issue why, like, the reason why I'm kind of glad they ignored two is because there would have been a lot of plot holes. Oh, how are his eyes functioning? How was he, where's he been after being set on fire? You know, it's going to be like, you're going to get hit with so many freaking plot holes where it's like, you know what? With the 2018, it was simple. He was, uh, he was shot. They caught him, sent him right back to Smith's Grove. Um, but I, I believe we, I told, I, we spoke about this. Um, I believe we spoke about this uh, when I did the, when I did the podcast with you in January, mm-hmm. that if I was to choose between Halloween 2 or Halloween 2018 as like if I was to pick like right you know what you got two Halloween films the original yeah and for the second one you have to pick which one do you see as the definitive sequel to the original I'm going with Halloween 2 hands down because like you know like I just told you with uh with Halloween 2018 it, it picks up 40 years later yeah to me I thought it was a pretty it was it was a good sequel to the original but what makes Halloween 2 so damn great is the fact that Halloween 78 is like the first half of a book and then Halloween 281 is the uh is the second half of the book cuz it picks up on the same night it's like it just it flows through like if you were to binge one and two together it just flows through you know um it just flows through easily mm-hmm. and you know the way the way they they close the chapter with two films like I was I, if I were to pick 10 out of 10 times I'm going with Halloween 2 over Halloween 2018 so but um, without getting sidetracked from the whole thing, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad they, they did. I'm glad they were smart enough to not include the original sequel, which I know a lot of fans were pissed. A lot of fans were pissed about it too, and then some were content with it because you know a lot of people do feel like the whole the sibling thing really. And lately, I've noticed it because I've been looking at these films a lot more differently. Like looking going into these films with a different mindset. Mm-hmm. And um, the idea of knowing their siblings, it's like, oh, it's wow, that's crazy. But the way they go about revealing it in the film, it's not really that much of a shocker. Like, it's not like a jaw-dropping moment. Like, I guess the way they just present the twist. And I think that's, I'm pretty sure that's what played a part in the sibling rivalry, not really, you know, drawing that many people. Like, you have to be that shock sensitive to really see like, oh, wow, like to have a jaw uh, a jaw dropping moment off of that. I agree. But um, I agree. And real quick, before I forget, I like how you said 
one and two, part one, the first half of the book, part two is like the second half of the book, and how they just kind of flow together. That makes me want to watch them both more, and I can't now. I can't wait till we start doing those, like doing that franchise, breaking that down one by one. I've, obviously, we're skipping, we're skipping part three, <laughs> because, which I'm disappointed because I, I got I got my love for part three. I'm one of the few that got love for part three. <laughs> no, the, the, hear hear me out though. I wish I would I wish I would have known that because I would reach out to. I recently did part three a couple weeks ago, and I did that one because um. I was doing this list, like it was like a top fifty list of horror movies some fans have never seen or something. I forgot what it's called exactly. And that was one of the movies on the list. And someone wanted to do that movie. We just reviewed it a couple weeks, like I said, a couple weeks ago. And like, had I not re- reviewed it so soon, I would have went back through and you know what I mean and reviewed it again. But that was my second time reviewing that on the podcast. Right. Already, because I reviewed that maybe like a year ago or two years ago. I don't remember when. Oh, about a year, year and a half, I should say. And then, you know, like I said, I just reviewed it the other night. But I will say part five was on, what was it? I think it was on AMC the other night. I don't know if you watched that marathon that was on. I've been, I've been watching bits and pieces with it. Like I swear, because it's been, I, I could be wrong, but I think that's the first year AMC is doing it. Like to begin at the beginning of October and then run all the way through. I'm not the 31st. sure. 31st. Honestly. Yeah, I could be wrong because I know commonly the past few years it would start on I think the second or third week of October. Mm-hmm. I'm not hundred percent. I'm not hundred percent, but um, but I, think- I, I was I watched bits and pieces of the original because I mean I have the Blu-ray box set, so I was gonna wait it up. I was like, you know what? I don't care if I have the Blu-rays if it's on TV. I'm watching that show on TV. That, <laughs> <I'm scared>. that, <laughs> like that, that's, my wife's been watching the AMC things since we started on you know October first. She'll just throw it on and just let it play throughout the day, or you know play after work or whatever, and just kind of let it play through. And uh, yeah, like I watched part part of part five, and I'm just like, I want to do. I was like, I want to do a podcast on this one. And I, the funny thing was, is I planned doing a podcast starting with part five and just kind of bouncing around. And my boy was like, "Yo," he was like, "Aaron, that makes no damn sense." <laughs> he was like, "If you plan on doing the whole franchise, just start from part one." And I was like, eh, "I guess you make sense." So yeah, and when I hit you up, I was like. Yo, he he really loves these Halloween movies. I might as well just see if he wants to be a part of this and kind of go through it, the whole franchise. And oh hell yeah, man! That's it's. I mean, I was thirteen. I know I said in the I was fifteen, but I, like I had to really deep dig and do some deep dig into memory. I was actually thirteen when I saw the original for the first time. I thought I was fifteen, but like I like I said, I had to really dig deep. But it was thirteen, and off of watching the original, that's what really got my. That's what really. Um, that's what pretty much from there, that's when I discovered my true passion for film. It was when I watched after watching the original Halloween film. And then from the sequels on, you know, and so forth. So I told you my first horror film was Halloween 2, the original one. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I know the three that I've, I've definitely seen the most, like growing up, was 2, 4, and 5. So I kind of, like when I watched, the, like I pretty much watched them in a very unorganized manner growing up. Yeah, I didn't. I believe I didn't like really watch them in order for the first time up until maybe say probably 15, 16. Mm -hmm. Because that's when I started getting my hands on DVDs finally. And then, you know, um, actually, no, I I might actually have been the same age, maybe 13, 14. I don't freaking remember. It's not like during my teen years, but definitely my teen years, my early teen years is when I was able to finally watch them. And then it made me love the franchise even more. It, don't get me wrong, I I do enjoy that franchise though, and I think the I know I seen the original the most, followed by maybe four and five, um, and then maybe H two. I don't know after that though. Definitely, pro- I think four and five though. Two, I, I don't really remember two too much. I gotta. That's why I can't wait for us to review that one as well. But I know four and five because four and five used to be ones that came on TV a lot, a whole lot. Yeah, a lot, especially on like AMC, especially AMC. Yes, and I remember, and I'm going to tell this story again, people. When we watch part five, I'm going to tell the same exact freaking story. I do not care. I've told this story on the show before, but it was part five. It was my brother's birthday party. I don't know what, how old he was. I don't know if he was someone that turned like 12 or 13 or whatever the case may be. It was my brother's birthday party, right? And, you know, the sleepover, watching horror movies, and Halloween 5 happened to be actually one of the movies that he picked out to watch. And I remember we were at his mom's 
he's <clears throat> he's my brother by you know just, we grew, I've known him since the second grade. But anyways, we were wa- we were watching Halloween Five at his mom's house. Me and a bunch of us, you know. It, okay, so in the living room, she had a white carpet. He was drinking fruit punch. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Um. <laughs> and you know the part where the chicks hold the pitchfork like this or whatever. The chick that's dressed like the Red Devil. She's yeah, like, she was she was trying to like yeah, Zach Michael in the barn. And he was sitting like right behind me. I looked back at him. I didn't realize he had taken a sip of his drink. I was like, look, she has a boner. I wish her, look, she has a boner. He spit his juice out, died. And again, you know how, I mean, you know how kids are, how boys are between the ages. Yeah, there's always some dumb shit to say during the freaking movies. Between 10, uh, fuck it. I'm 34 years old now. So between 10 and death, <laughs> we laugh at some dumb ass shit. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. And like, of course, as adults, we might not have laughed at it as hard unless we were, like, you know, having a drink or whatever the case may be. But as kids, that was just the funniest shit in the world. And he's, like, thankfully, somehow he got it cleaned up. Like, right away, he went and got a rag and just started, like, getting it out and just cleaning it. Cleaning it, cleaning it. And I'm just, I was like, uh, so they, even, they even takes me back. Because I remember uh, I was 15. It was my 15th birthday, actually. My uncle had uh, surprised me. He, I mean, he couldn't give it to me, but um, he gave his mom and she gave it to me. The the first Nightmare on Elm Street DVD box that then dropped that the cases they made uh it formed Freddy's back. Yes. I was excited, I'm like oh, I want to get my hands on this, but I didn't know he got it for me. So at that time in my room I had bunk beds. I had a like top you know, top bunk, uh, uh bottom bunk, top bunk. So I invited um friends over. So half of us were on the bottom bunk sitting down watching it. I like we're at like a freaking theater, and the other half was on the top bunk, and we were just cracking on like each scene. Yeah, it, it actually, it's funny that you mentioned that because I, I remember that, dude, and it was hilarious. Man. Don't you miss those days, yo? Like, that's something I really do miss. Don't get me wrong. Like, adulthood is cool, but I miss being, like, that teenager, that young teen. Th- between, you know, young teen, you're just, you don't have to work. You just go to school. Summers, you do whatever the hell you want. But on those weekends, summer night, whatever it is, summer to be during the week, whatever. But those weekends are when you got your friends over, and you're doing, like, a horror movie marathon, and you're just cracking jokes eating some candy, drinking some soda, eating some pizza or whatever, and just watching these movies and just laughing, having such a great freaking time. I miss those times, man. It's it, like, it's, it's still cool now watching those movies with your same friends as adults when you can, as we were talking earlier, how you have to make yeah. your shit. And now everybody has families now. And I mean, people live in different states and stuff now. So it's, it's not the same as far as getting to watch them together as much. But when you do, it's just like, you bring up, as a matter of fact, when you do, or even when you hang out with your friends like that, that are bring up those funnier, fun moments of both the stories we just told and countless times of watching horror movies together, or whatever the case may be. But I'm just like, I just miss those times of just chilling, watching horror. Like, for example, the um, Friday the 13th box set, the one that came, the DVD box, the one that came out in a little black box. Right. All the movies, not the metal one, but the one before that, way before that. I remember getting that on the week on a weekend and I went we went I don't know if we took a bus to go get it to the went to uh, FYE to go grab it or if my mother brought us or what well we got back to my house you know obviously go upstairs and we wanted some candy and shit you know like candy energy drinks and chips and shit so I went to there was a gas station literally like right up like if you, I can cut through my mother's backyard it was Hess cut through there and, you know, got up, whatever we wanted to get, and came back. And my one brother, he stayed home. I didn't realize. Or I knew he stayed there. But I got when I left, he said he waited about two He told me the story later, or when I came back inside, I'll tell you what happened. Anyways, I guess when I left, he left about two minutes after I did and hid. And there's, like, this big-ass tree in my mother's yard, and it was nighttime. So I'm coming back, and I don't know if he jumped and grabbed me or jumped and yelled. I don't remember. I just remember saying, oh, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Him. I was like, what the fuck? He was like, yo, I left about two minutes after you did. He said I left, he, he, because again, it's not even two minutes away. He's like, I left about two minutes after you did, so I knew you were at the store. And I was like, I just sitting here waiting and waiting. I was like, yo, you know what would have been funny? Because we had cut through the back. Or just because it was, even if you go out the yard, like, and cut through the yard, cut through the back. I was like, now what would you have done if I would have just went around the front and went in the front door? <laughs> you would have been standing there for bad long, bad long waiting for me. <laughs> He was like, I don't fucking know. And but, then you, like, out of the loop, like, where the fuck is he? Where the fuck did he go? What's he doing? What's he in the bathroom? Where'd he go? But, like, man, I just, this genre has just brought so much into my life as far as 
meeting so many. I mean, like you, if it wasn't for horror, me and you would have never met. I know we never met in person, yeah. but just this alone was because of the love, the love of horror. I've met so many awesome people. I have a podcast for it, a YouTube channel for it, and just so many different horror groups. Again, connecting with the people, learning about so many more different movies, learning about indie horror films. I would never known about indie horror films if I wasn't a horror fan. There's a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Um, no, I, no, absolutely. I agree with you. And like a lot of a few of my friends, and even my uncle, my uncle is the most of it. He cracks on like, yo, yo, can you stop watching these fucking horror movies every time? Because well, I'll post on my, my IG and then I even post my Facebook. He's like, yo, not again. Yo, but it's like you just have a. Uh, for some of us, it's just been it's it's a uh, it's our escape in a way. You know what I mean? Like it's our escape from reality. It's yeah. And look, as a kid, I would even look in the horror genre. I was just, I was scared as hell of horror films. And then when I came across Halloween two at five years old, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah, that scared me. But you know, as I got older, it was just that in, uh, you know being intrigued by these films. You know, and I'm obviously as I grew, got older from between five and say 12 it's like all right these are horror movies like i'm just watching but then when i saw the original at 13 that was when they just unlocked a whole new other passion then you know you go from halloween to the friday the 13th films to never known street to scream to chucky to hellraiser leprechaun texas chainsaw massacre you know it's you know it's granted i have my other love for you know action comedy crime whatever but horror just it um my love for horror it's like you can't compare it to yeah. the other the other genres for me horror horror you know what it is <laughs> horror is like your best friend you know what i mean like your ride or die your best friend and then the rest of the genres are like friends slash acquaintances like you fuck with them they're cool but horror is like that one you can always rely on and like, you know what I mean? Like, you're having a bad day. Fuck, I want to watch somebody get chopped up. You're having a good day. Fuck, I want to watch somebody get chopped up. You're bored. Fuck, I want to watch. Like, there's, you don't have to have a reason to watch a horror movie. You know what I mean? It's and like every other genre. I don't. Not that you have to have a reason to watch those, because I mean, I am a huge Ninja Turtle fan, so I will watch those at any time. But still, with horror, it's just like, I don't know. It's just, a, it's just a different bond with with horror movies. I think because I, th- I think it's because they can be so crazy and so ridiculous. And so out of this world that it's just like, wow, holy shit. This is, this is really entertaining. And the older I get, like, as I'm an adult now, of course, I see it more as like a beautiful art, especially once you get to meet people who do special effects and all that kind of stuff. Then you're really seeing it as more of an art than just like a film with people getting chopped up or ghosts jumping out of nowhere and all that other crazy shit that goes on in it. And I want, I wanted to use the friend thing, like your best friend versus like, Saying like horror is like your wife, and then this is like side chicks because that's, that's, that's a bad analogy to use. That's a horrible analogy to use. I'm like, use the friend thing. Use the friend thing. And I mean, again, like I said, I made a podcast for us. I obviously love it. And it's just, it's so fucking fun, man. It's so fun to do. The video games of it are fun. Just talking about it's fun. Watching it is fun. There's been, there'll be times, yo, where I'll just be thinking about it, like just when, again, being at work. As you can see, I'm wearing a horror shirt. I would go to work wearing different shirts and all this stuff. There would be a few times, yo, a handful of times. I'll say five, maybe six times besides, like, not including job interviews. Maybe five or six times. This is a big maybe. I would go to work without a horror T-shirt on. And people would be like, Aaron, what's going on? <laughs> like, what are you, where's your horror shirt? And honestly, yo, even when I had interviews, because like I work for the state, and sometimes the interviews would be right in the building that I work at, for the most right. part. I'd have my button up and slacks on, but guess what I had under the button up? As soon as that interview's over, that button up <laughs> comes off, boom, horror shirt. So it's just it's just one of those things to where I I just enjoy it. It's like a it's like a comfort food almost. Like that comfort food, that comfort drink, that comfort that just kind of right. And it brings like so many great memories. Not that other genres don't like. I feel like the only other movie for me personally that can touch horror and be like level with horror is the Ninja Turtle movies. And that's because again, that's something I've been watching since I was a kid, and watch with you know close friends and family. So we, we just love it. But still, horror is just. I watch horror more. The horror is the genre I watch and discuss more than any other genre, hands down. 
Absolutely. I think for me and in my case, I think if, if there's one franchise that could touch horror, it's it's Fast and the Furious because I started I watched that for the first time around the same age that I saw um uh Yeah, around the same time I saw the first Fast and the Furious movie, I literally grew up with that franchise. Mm -hmm. I was five when um, part one came out. And I mean, look, part nine at 24, well, 25, because it got pushed the next year. But um, yeah, man, like I remember when I first watched the original Halloween and despite even watching the sequels before watching the original, when I watched the original, that whole aura of it, the way it was shot, the music, um, like uh, the psychological tension, mm -hmm. you know, the, the few jump scares that was timed fucking spot on. You know, it's like artistically, it's a great film and it's not because, um, you know, you tell anybody Halloween, oh, no, it's too scary. It's like that's 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 a movie I would recommend because it is, but I would also recommend all these other horror films. It's just that what well, Halloween you know, John Carpenter even said it, you know, to, in order to make Michael Myers scary, I had him, I didn't have him walk like a monster, I had him walk, walk like a man. Yeah. Because with the supernatural, like, I don't believe in supernatural things like that. But when you have, uh, you know, a human-based killer, that pretty much that's something that could actually happen in real life for all we know. Mm -hmm. You know, like the way, ju just the mystique that was behind Michael in that original film is what just made it so damn artistically beautiful, man. And just among, among everything else, you know, the, the music, the way it was shot and all that, dude, it's, it's a beast of its own. And the same thing goes with the original Friday 13th and the original, pretty much the original of every horror uh, film franchise. They're all special in their own, in their own way. I agree. And going back with what you were saying about Halloween too is it's not gore or sorry, Halloween two as also, not Halloween two as in part two. But the original yeah. Halloween is um it's not gory either. Like you would think that a slasher flick would be really gory, but a lot of the stuff it's not too bloody. Like Friday the thirteenth is a gory ass franchise as a whole. Oh hell yeah. Especially that uncut version. Oh man. <laughs> like I was like like they're showing you the bare minimum in the theatrical cut, but the uncut, the unrated cut, you're seeing some shit. And I think that's beautiful, but like Halloween, and it's like you said, they're scary. They're all scary in their own way. And I do like, I like how different they're like. I like how similar they are, but I'll say with Friday the 13th and Halloween, especially yeah. how different they are at the same time. Like, yeah, you have two killers. They're both wearing masks. They both have weapons, of course. And I know they, you could say stole, I guess, or borrowed some ideas. Friday the 13th from Halloween, because Halloween was out in 78, two years sooner. But, I don't know, it's it's just it's just one of those things. It's, it's crazy. You know what's crazy about these about this those two and Freddy is that they all came out, well, between 78 and 80, in the 80s. And they're still, like, the big three. They're still, like, the... the yeah. It's like, are you a fan of... Pretty much... I'm a fan of all three, of course. You're a fan of all three. But... My favorite is Jason. Your favorite is Michael. It's like those three has like their set of fan. You know what I mean? Their set of like fan fans. Like, yes, I like I like all three, but this is my favorite. This is your favorite. This is her favorite. Right. And it's like I don't know anybody. I'm not saying that people don't because I'm sure there's plenty of people that don't. But I ha I have yet to meet a person that doesn't like at least one of those three films. One of those three icons. Yeah. And it's, that's to me that says a lot because like I said earlier, those three movies, as far as the franchises, as they're movies. Yes, we love the movies, we're diehard fans. They're not the best horror movies out there as far as like quality, as far as like telling the story and everything with it. You know what I mean? They're fun movies, they're great movies, they're enjoyable. I love them, don't get me wrong. And they're the movies that I can go back to more than most movies. Like I'll give you an example, like the movie The Thing. Great movie. Great fucking movie, probably better yeah, than movies. But same with I'll say yeah, same with Jaws to an extent. But I will watch Friday the Thirteenth, Halloween, and Nightmare on Elm Street. I'll pop those in quicker than I'll pop in the thing. Even though it's a better, absolutely, even though it's a better movie. But I ha I enjoy my time more with those movies. As crazy as that may sound. Now again, they could be those 
the thing. Way better movie, you could say, but it's just not as enjoyable to me. It's not as fun to me. Not that the, not that it's not an enjoyable movie, but there's like, and I think that's why for me I don't have a favorite horror movie. I'm like a mood horror. It's like whatever I feel like watching, I'll watch. But so, minus the whole podcasting, when I have to do a podcast. It's like whatever I feel like watching, I'll watch, or whatever the wife wants to watch, you know, we'll lay down and watch it. That's why I can't really choose a favorite because it's like say if I'm in the, if I'm in the mood for a slasher, I'll watch a slasher. It doesn't have to be the ones that we just named. I'll just watch a slasher in general. If I'm in the mood for paranormal, I'll watch. You know what I mean? I'm like I, if I'm in the mood for a certain right. movie, and then if it's like. I want to throw a horror movie on. I'm kind of just kicking back, you know, say if I'm playing cards or something, playing whatever with, with the wife or whoever, just kind of, you know, or shooting the shit, drinking. I'll throw on Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, because you know those franchises well enough to where you don't have to pay attention. Basically, literally. Like, there's, yo, there's been times where my, I'll be cooking dinner, right? Or just cooking, yeah, cooking dinner, let's say, or doing whatever in the kitchen. I will leave the kitchen because I hear Friday the 13th on. I just know a certain scene's on. I'm like I gotta see this kill really quick. I gotta, yeah. see, or I gotta see Jason throw somebody through this window really quick, and then I go back to cooking this chicken. I have to see this scene, and I that's that's what I think that's another thing I love about these movies. You see them so much, you've seen them as a kid, so you grow up. You see them so much, and you know them so well to where you can kind of be doing other things, still have a good time with them, or you could just sit down and watch the whole fucking movie. Like I can also do that too. I can yeah. have a Friday the Thirteenth marathon. I can have an Emerald Street marathon, and you know Halloween and so on and so forth. It's just the the eighties did it so well, man. The eighties did it so right. And I, how you were just telling me earlier before we started recording, when you have downtime, you're watching eighties movies that you've never seen before, which I think is awesome. Yeah, no, and um, not absolutely, and because I've I've been slacking for the longest, like saying I would check out these 80s horror films and this goes back to me being so damn comfortable with having 50 plus marathons with the, the top three um yeah and it's it's always good to revisit it's always good to watch new horror films you haven't seen before and it's always nice to revisit the horror films you're comfortable with because there's usually a guarantee you're gonna have a new different mindset when watching these films like I'll give you an example uh, recently, for the first time in four years, I rewatched all the Hellraiser films. Oh, nice. Because the first time I watched all of them, like, fully, I'm not counting watching bits and pieces of it, like, watching, you know, like, binging them, was way back, was in 2016. And that was, you know, between then and now, that was the last time I saw it. So I was like, you know, let me revisit these films. So I had a marathon that lasted about two to three days. And I enjoyed, the, surprisingly, I enjoyed the most of them. I enjoyed most of them. The only ones I didn't really enjoy was, uh, what was it? It was um, Deader, Hellworld, and Revelations. Is that the last one that came out, Revelations? Judgment was the last one. That actually, that one actually was, it was an improvement over Revelations and the two before, <laughs> yeah, the two before that. Um, yeah, and even at that time, at 2016, when I first watched it, the original Hellraiser, I was bored as hell because it was a slow, this was my introduction mm. into a slow burn horror film where you're not going to, you're so used to seeing Michael, Jason, and Freddie pop up consistently where you're watching a horror film where you, you got to go through the story and then you see him. Mm -hmm. And that's what really uh, got me out of my comfort zone and started getting into the slow burn horror films, you know, the... You know, kind of like Suspiria almost. Uh, like, you know, films like that where it's like it's slow burn. It's not as uh, slasher-esque yeah. as the ones you're used to. And upon, you know, like a, as I rewatched them, I enjoyed them for the most part. My favorite sequel out of them is Hellbound, which was the second one. Yeah. And then uh, the one, I, my least favorite would definitely have to be Revelations. But, um, you know, the point being, like, it, it was good revisiting that film, those films for the first time, you know, since 2016. And even with, uh, it is like, I'm not saying, you know, take a break years later, then revisit. No, because you, the, this is why I'm always open to hearing everybody's opinions, because it does affect, it can, not that they're forcing you to change your opinion, but it can give you a new lens on things. Like, give you an example, I couldn't stand Halloween three growing up. I couldn't stand the side of Halloween three growing up. And then once I hit, once I got older and I understood why Michael wasn't, in, was, wasn't in it. 
you know, watched it with a completely different mindset. And I love three now. Like picture that. Like I'm telling you, my my hate, my hatred for Halloween three was damn near toxic. And then as I got older, I love it. Usually when I'm out, I listen to the the soundtrack. The soundtrack's my top three right now, still. I remember I told you in the first uh when we did the podcast, the last podcast, it's on my top three. Halloween three, I love Halloween three. Same thing with Halloween six. I couldn't stand Halloween six. Then when I went over my dad's house to watch it with them, he told me, Oh, honestly, I feel like part six had the scariest Michael. I'm like, what? How can you say? I was like, look, put your hatred aside, like just look at the way they film it, like you know, how he just comes out of the shadows, like that. You know, like I don't know if you remember Halloween six, well, that blue lighting, like the way he's just it's like a dark gothic type of tone in the theatrical car we're talking mm. and i'm like you know what you're right like it actually and not for nothing halloween six to me does have the scariest michael it's, in terms of sequels not including the original parts i think out of the sequels from from two to resurrection part six was the scariest in my opinion because i think michael was at his most violent and his most gory i mean that i mean shit look at the hospital yeah. The hospital massacre scene alone, you're like, yo, damn. And um, uh, recently, actually, uh, this was um, early summer, I decided to put my hatred aside for the Rob Zombie Halloween films and give them give them a chance. I still don't like them. But, no, I still don't like them, but the hatred did die down compared to before. Like, you know, I do appreciate... And this is one thing I'm going to get back to where I was going to go at. A lot of people can't stand Rob Zombie's Halloween because they say that it ruins the original when that's not the case. Not at all. Like, okay, yeah, granted. I mean, in my opinion, and this is why I'm always open to different opinions, there's people that love his remake way more than the original. There's people that love the original way more than the remake. What people, you know, like, it's not that they don't understand. It's like, you know, it's when you're so emotionally attached so the you know your favorite horror film, you're gonna feel a certain type of way. Obviously, oh yeah. When is a remake? Because I I couldn't stand his remakes. And then when you see you know in the horror group pages, when you see people's different opinions, like you know what, let me give this another shot. You know, I like the fact that Rob Zombie. It was a different approach with Michael, but it's just for me the mystique isn't there. Like that aura. Honestly, I feel like if he had if he had remade it, but scrapping Laurie Strode, like he scraps all the characters from the original. Similar premise, kind of like in the Halloween comics where, because in some of the comics, he doesn't always uh, stalk Laurie. He, you know, he focuses on different, like if he had pretty much made his original set of characters, but featuring Michael Myers, I think it would have been better received instead of replicating, you know, the original. Kind of like pretty much how the Texas Chainsaw remake did in 03. There was no hitchhiker. There was no. Uh, there was no cook. You gonna try to get it? Like it was. It was a completely different film than the '74 film. It was. If it was in that type of direction, I. I'm confident it would have. It might have not have been um, as loved, but the hatred would not have been that high. Like I think it would have been more appreciated. Maybe not loved. Maybe, but I feel like that's what he really should have done too. And it was just the fact that he had to sympathize for Michael on top of that because they show you the rough childhood he had it's like damn like and even at that you watch the remake he's really not trying to kill laurie up until like once she starts injuring him because he's his pretty much his min- his his uh motivation was just strictly reuniting with um laurie and they emphasized on that heavily in the sequel and of course you know the big hate that the sequel has the fucking white horse oh my gosh you know but it, and again, like people have said, like you know, if you really think about it, the White Horse wasn't really it didn't really get that much screen time, which is true. But that wasn't needed, in my opinion, at all. Like if, if you want to do the psychological link, like his mother being there as a ghost was good enough. Mm-hmm. The whole random White Horse to me was completely unnecessary. I agree, and like. I loved the I love sorry I loved the the remake the first one I enjoyed not as much as the original of course but I enjoyed it I liked the backstory and all that I didn't mind the whole sympathy thing for Michael I did not like part two I have to see and again I know we're gonna be re- we're gonna get to those two so I'll give you my real real feelings on both of those yeah soon soon I gotta I have to watch them as far as the Rob Zombie remakes I'm talking about I have to rewatch them to get that refresher but what I was gonna say is like 
what it is, I know you're saying like the white horse wasn't in there for that much screen time and you hated it just as much as everybody else did. But that stands out in that movie way too much. Like that is all I remember about part two. <laughs> and that's bad, yo. Cause other than that, I know part two was real gory. And that's one thing I liked about his remakes too, was they were real gory and real bloody and all that craziness. Not that they needed to be. But like I said, I got I gotta go back and rewatch those. And the original, or sorry, the first one that he did, I thought he did an excellent, excellent job with the first one. I understand the hate because people's, a lot of people didn't like the whole having the backstory of Michael Myers because they're saying it's, you know, it's the basic, typical thing. Kid, bad childhood, bad home, starts killing animals. Of course, it's going to grow to be pretty much a serial killer versus you don't know why he's doing it. The, the original one is scarier because you do not know why he's doing it. That's one thing I love about the original. You don't know why he's doing it. And it's real kind of subtle. I, I mean, it's subtle. But with the remake, it's just like, you know why he's doing it. So you kind of have, like, I'm not saying you're like sympathizing with him when he's doing it as an adult. But for example, like when he's getting bullied and he beats the shit out, he kills the one bully. You get, I'm not saying you had to kill him, but whoop his ass. You get that. You understand that. And it's just like, I don't know, man. I, I just really enjoyed the first, like I said, the first one I, I loved. The second one, the fucking horse. That's all I fucking remember is the white horse. As a matter of fact, when we when we review the second one, if I remember, I'll probably have the fucking white horse behind me. <laughs> Just the white yo, and, and this is the crazy part about Rob Zombie telling me too, because yo, it starts off so damn solid with him going off in the hospital. Mm-hmm. Like not for nothing. That was a beautiful fucking scene. A lot of people, I feel like a lot of people, and this this goes back to me trying to watch these movies in a different mindset. Your hatred about one thing can outweigh the whole movie where you don't, you know, you don't even think to appreciate the good in that film. But one thing I do appreciate about Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 is, damn, that hospital scene was freaking top-notch solid, in my opinion. Like, and you hear Michael's grunts, it's like, yo, like, yo, like you, you feel that, you're feeling that anger that he's having. It's like, damn, like, and it's... um, Like, you know, yeah, both remakes, they have their pros, but, you know, they also have their cons. And that's a common thing with a lot of films. Like, it's usually the hatred. Like, you can hate one thing again, the white horse. That outweighs that like this. Because I've seen a lot of the comments. Fuck, Rob's always telling me too. Why? White horse. <laughs> but, I mean, among other things, aside from that too, like, one thing I didn't like about Rob's always telling me too, the pacing fell off. Mm-hmm. There was nothing in that film. See, at least ha- Rob's always Halloween he gives you that feeling that's a, a Halloween film. Like, you know, the score, it's similar to the original. Halloween 2, you get none of that. In fact, I don't know if you've noticed this. Throughout Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, you do not hear the Halloween theme song up until the end credits. Holy shit. See, I, I really have to go back and rewatch that. And I like what you said, because you're right about that, about how your hate for certain parts of a movie can make you hate the whole movie, and it outweighs... The good, like, it could be one thing you hate about that movie and, like, six things you liked about it, but because of that one thing that seems like a big moment, it's like, fuck. Sometimes it does fuck the whole movie up. So now I'm going to try, listen, people, I'm going to try my best when we get to Halloween 2 of Rob Zombie. I'm going to try my best to watch it with an open mind, try to forget it, forget the hate for it, and just try to watch it and see how it goes. I won't make any promises that I'm going to like it or love it. I won't make any promises that I'm not going to hate it either. <laughs> but we'll see what happens, man. Like, I, I, I can't wait. I think this is going to be really fun. And uh, I guess we could about wrap it up, though, man. I mean, this was a good time. I cannot wait to do the original Halloween Monday morning. That's going to be fun as shit. Oh, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Excellent movie. And, I mean, if there's anything you want to plug, man, feel free. So uh, I got the Friday 13 box set. I'm one of the lucky ones. I got it early. Um, to just do a quick overall review for those wondering, guys, Shout Factory knocked it out the park with this box set. Um, pretty much the same way it did with the Halloween box that they did. Uh, each of the cases, they have the original cover art, and there's also reversible covers. Um the first four, but you know, of course, the 4K scans and the rest from there, the new 2K scans, they added a lot of new features. If you guys are tempted, 
to get it, I would say go for it because it's a huge step up from the metal box set. This one comes in individual cases as opposed to, you know, this one coming in sleeves and on top of that, it's two films. Some of the mo majority of them is two films and uh, one disc. But definitely, guys, uh, I would say get it. Obviously, if you guys want that leather graph and poster, if you're lucky enough to get it, get that. If not, I mean, you can still settle for it. It's the same box, just same box and features, just that you're not getting the leather graph poster. But um, I recommend it. I love it. I do hope that Shout Factory going forward starts doing box sets for Child's Play, Nightmare on Elm Street, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Hellraiser, etc., whichever fran horror franchise there is. Because this is, they really, um, guys, they really knocked out of the park with this with this set. Oh, man. And Aaron, you got to get yours too. You got to get yours too, Aaron. Oh, no, <laughs> Since you're a Jason guy, come on, you got to get it's, it's it's your it's your birthright. <laughs> you're damn right. My birthday's in November, so. Hey, people! I'm just I'm just throwing it out there, people. If I'm I'm not opposed to this, listen, hear me out. Everybody that listens to Horror Research Thirty, send me one dollar, <laughs> one dollar a piece, and I know I have about nine thousand downloads. I don't need nine thousand. I mean, I wouldn't say no to nine thousand dollars. Send me a dollar just to get this. <laughs> but no, seriously though, like I do want to get. It. I'm going to get it. And man, I had a good time with you as we did the last time. This time it won't, be so, it won't be so far. It won't be 20 months down the road. I know it wasn't that long, but again, 20 yeah. months, a long, crazy year. It'll be in a few days, actually. And it's going to be fun breaking down the original Halloween, like really giving it a good breakdown. And then we're going to be doing part two and part four next week as well. And we'll cough, skip part three. Cough, cough, skip part three. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> We did, but we'll see what happens, though, man. And then once, same thing how I did the, well, Friday the 13th, what I did, I did a countdown for that already, or a review breakdown, but I'm doing another, um, I'm going through the franchise again. I forgot what part we're at now. And then once we're once we're done with that one, we're going to do another review of it. Not review, you know what I mean? Like a, a list. A right. list again. Yeah. A revise, because my list changed since, which that's one thing I will say this before we wrap up. That's one thing I know can happen for me with any franchise that I like is my list can change with, especially with like the top three, I'll say. Like, I remember the first time I did my list, part three was my favorite as far as Friday the 13th. Part seven was second. Right now, part seven is my favorite. And yeah, I, I think for, for me, part six would be my favorite still. I don't think that's going to change, but. The rest of the list, I'll give that out once the episode, once I record the episode, the episode drops. But it's gonna be fun, man. It's gonna be fun. I can't wait to do that. Um, but yeah, man. Like I said, thank you again for coming on. I can't. No, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Oh, you know anything. Anything. So it feels good to be good. It's, like I said, it felt great being back here after so many months. So. We got to do this more often. Besides the Halloween, we got to do this more often, man. Uh, absolutely. And oh. back to real quick, I just want to plug my network, the Z Network. So many awesome creators on there. Shout out to all the creators on there. Horror Gamer, Any Last Words Podcast, Stories from a Bar. Let's get focused. And I think that's all we have right now. I mean, we have more shows on there, but a lot of them are just us with other shows. So, yeah, definitely check out the Z Network. It is on YouTube. We have a few videos up now. There will be more up. And there's going to be some exclusive, exclusive content. Oh, shout out to the Turkey Network, who is also a part of the Z Network. There's going to be a, some exclusive content on the Z Network that you will not get anywhere else on any of our other platforms but the Z Network on YouTube. So definitely go follow the Z Network. And again, people, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching. And as always, I'll see you.